Everyone's favorite beginning to a series. Look at Sierra. Bing bong. I wish my life was sparkly. No, no, <laughs> our lives are full of sadness and darkness. Like this, this fade out right here. That's our that's, lives. That's where we're at. Wow. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, that's Hopefully right. Hopefully we get this, a new intro screen in our life like this. That would be awesome. <laughs> no, it's not going to happen. Look how <laughs> look how awful the the original versions icons Buttons. were. They're yeah. they're hideous. It's like a lemon like with the sun kiss tattoo on it. Was it supposed to be just like a gold but it came off as just like I, yellow? I don't know what they were thinking with that. All right. Well, this is the 1.0 version of King's Quest 6. This is the floppy version that came out first. No, but These discs acting. aren't floppy. No, but it's, it's, <laughs> since COVID has decided to rear its ugly head and make everything depressing again, it's time to play something that makes me happy, which is King's Quest. Except the new one. It doesn't make me happy. It makes Well, me you don't happy. even consider it canon. Dude. I don't. I consider it hot garbage. So we will uh, go into the opening. Not garbage. It's it's terrible. There's only so much that spending a lot of money on voice acting can do. Long ago, in the castle of a kingdom called Daventry. Are those cell phone? Or not cell phone screens, but rotary cords By on the, the top and bottom? Alexander, here you are. Voice acting's a lot You're different. You're not still thinking about Cosima, are you? Hmm? Oh. I suppose I am. Son, it's been too many months. You've got to pull yourself together. After all, you only met her that one time. Yeah, no kidding. I know. <laughs> Have you discovered anything about the land of the Green Isles? No. No one's even heard of it. I'm just it's really horny. Vanished. <laughs> I wish I could help. Please, try to think about something else, dear. I'll try, Mother. Take a cold shower. <laughs> I'll fail, Mother. So yeah, this voice acting was on the floppy disk, as well as this like computer animation. So think of how crazy that is. What's sad is this is almost as good as the animation we got for like the Mask of Eternity. <laughs> oh yeah, which was, you know, a full gig game. <laughs> I think this game was like 12 megabytes. Alexander, I feel so alone. I, I wish I knew what to do. I need your Alexander. dick inside of me. Kasima! Boy, Wait. Mother, is this what is this mother, those TikToks I hear about Wait, so much? Wait, mother. <laughs> Why could all of the voice acting not have been like this? And I bet that was amazing <laughs> at the time, that turn and all Alexander, that. Alexander, what on earth? Our mouths don't move. You're as white as a ghost. The, my eyebrow like does. <laughs> in, the mirror. in the mirror? The magic mirror? Yes. And it showed me how to find her. What? Huh? How? The stars. Where? I saw the stars outside her window. I can navigate by the stars. Oh, Alexander. If I worked really in accounting. Cool. It'll be all right. So yeah. I gained telepathy, and I could just send you my thoughts without moving my mouth. <laughs> Who has the shining here? Three long months, Prince Alexander sailed the snown seas and beyond. Is your boat sinking? <laughs> Not yet. The D stands for dick. In Kasima's mouth. <laughs> dick in her mouth. She's reaching out. Please stick it in my gooch. <laughs> dick in my cha cha. Ooh, feels Is so that good. why it didn't get on the radio? Is that the original voice? <laughs> Very possible. There <laughs> Land. Is this Veggie Tales? Oh. <laughs> As the ship nears the shore, day turns to night and the sea turns violent. Oh no! Shit just got. 
No dick, in, no dick in the cooch now. Oh, man. Well, I hope you've enjoyed King's Quest VI. Everybody die. <laughs> King's Quest. I feel like this is how King's Quest Seven should have played out. <laughs> you, you mean they died at the beginning and we didn't have to play it? Yeah. And it was over? That was $60. Somehow a was... house gets landed on Fifi. <laughs> <laughs> Game over. You win. Odd we're getting the credits before the game actually starts. Would you like to play again? You have selected. No. We will restart immediately. Yeah, it's like you, they got Sierra's A-team on this one. I feel like 5 and 6 are probably my favorite of the series. 4, four 5, and 6 I think are the best. Well, they have Jane Jensen. That's part of it. You know, they have released a a point-and-click version of King's Quest IV now. Ooh! It's like the, the same graphics, but they made it have the interface. And somebody, uh, I think, gosh, yeah, Brandon Bloom, I think, uh, does music for a lot of stuff. He's working on, like, a version of King's Quest II that is done in the style of the 1990 King's Quest 1. Oh, oh wow. So I'll be glad when that's done, because that will be played. Because that's my favorite era of graphics. Like that dithered kind of thing. Yeah. Thank you, Quality Assurance. We'll see if it was assured quality, because this is the first version of it. Okay, so... The narrator for now, we're going to tag this since our voices are dead and, and tired. <laughs> Adam, I'm tagging you in. Here we go. Okay. Alexander awakens <laughs> to find himself on an unfamiliar beach. For a moment, he's too dazed to remember how he got here. Gorsh, Mickey. What a, <laughs> wait a minute. Here comes Cedric. <laughs> I'll tell you how you got here. Ooh, it was a doozy. I snuck aboard this ship. Grant told me to go away. So I was like, I'll go with my other best friend, Alexander. I thought this was a bachelor party. And it just turned into a bunch of fucking shit. <laughs> That's what this game really is missing is Cedric. Every game is missing Cedric. Even, even King's Quest V. <laughs> Then he does remember the shipwreck, the sea, just as he had seen his men safely into the lifeboats, a gigantic wave picked him up and tossed him overboard onto the churning sea. I saw no lifeboats on that boat. They just should have just killed them like it should have been. You know, it's like, give me a break. They're dead. Well, no, they had the inflatable lifeboats like they do on, on cruise ships now. No, they're dead. <laughs> they're, they're dead, Jim. They're totally dead. <laughs> well, you know, he is a, he has concussed. Maybe he just thinks they're alive. <laughs> right. actually all well, no, at the end, of the end of the game, they're like, oh, we were so worried when your crew came back without you. <laughs> that was the last he's seen of his crew. Debris from the shipwreck is scattered along the shore, but of the lifeboats and his men, there is thankfully not a trace because they're at the bottom of the sea. <laughs> they're all down there with Jason Voorhees with the rock around them. <laughs> he can only hope and pray that the lifeboat survived the currents and that his men made it, they made their way safely back to Daventry. They're like, this place sucks. <laughs> We're getting... Wait, wait, guys, wait. I'm going to get all the lifeboats. This place sucks. Uh, oh. But where is Daventry? Where is Keith? For that matter, where is he? And how will he ever find Cosima now? Well, you see, Alexander, there's going to be something called, you know, convenience about to occur. Well, you know, it's called the power of boners. <laughs> First off, this is atrocious. <laughs> Honestly, though, for the time period, I'm sure it was like, the okay. Other one, the other one looked better. 
five had a better one. Like, look at like the knapsack looks like a smiley face. I have a feeling that this was not what they intended to release, but they had to meet a deadline. So bright and awful. So, of course, one of the big things here I think is neat about this version, you can get, like, the story up to this point. So it's like King's Quest... Oh. King's Quest 1, Quest for the Crown. Long ago, in a kingdom of Daventry, there were three magical treasures that kept the kingdom strong and prosperous. A magic mirror that foretold the future, an enchanted shield with the power to protect from any invaders, and a treasure chest that was never empty. These treasures were taken from Daventry by deception and stealth, and without them, Daventry grew poor and weak. King Edward, once a stout-hearted and vigorous ruler, had become powerless and sickly. Edward had no heir, and everyone feared that chaos would result from his death. King Edward asked his bravest knight, Sir Graham, to embark upon a quest to recover the three treasures. Despite many challenges, Graham's quest was successful. As his reward, King Edward named Sir Graham his heir and granted him the throne of Daventry. Thus began the reign of King Graham of Daventry. We have King's Quest 2. Oh, like, yes. If you would like to read that Romancing one. the throne. King Graham was a wise and kindly monarch. With his great wisdom and the return of the three treasures, Daventry prospered once more. But Graham knew that he must soon marry and establish his own royal line with an heir to the throne. The handsome young king searched far and wide for a bride, but no maiden captured his eye nor his longing heart. Then, one day, King Graham saw in his magic mirror a vision of a lovely young woman held prisoner in a quartz tower. Girl in the quartz tower. That doesn't work. The captive maiden was named Valsina. Or, like, oh. Valenice. Hold on. Valenice. Why did I say Valenice? Anyway, Valerita. Valenice. I know this. I know <laughs> this. Story. I know this. I know this. A girl both beautiful and wise. She had been stolen from her home and taken to a far land. Graham vowed to find her and set her free. After a long journey with many trials, he did just that. Graham asked Valenice to be his queen, and she agreed. Thus began the royal family of King Graham and Queen Valenice of Daventry. King's Quest Three: to heir is human. Queen Valenice and King Graham soon became the parents of twins, a son and a daughter named Alexander and Rosella. Life in Daventry was peaceful and good for a time, but the young prince was stolen from his cradle and the kingdom went into years of deep mourning. In a land far away lived an evil and powerful wizard named Mananan. It was his wont to kidnap infant boys and raise them to be his slaves. That's not weird or... Or anything. <laughs> uh, before his slaves were full grown and could pose a threat to the wizard's dominance, Mananan ridded himself of each in turn. However, Mananan's most recent vassal, a boy he called Gwydion, was unusually bright and perceptive. He mastered several of the wizard's spells and turned them against the tyrant to gain his freedom. Gwydion was, of course, the kidnapped Prince Alexander. Of course. <gasps> After escaping Mananan, Alexander's travels brought him to Daventry. Not the lovely and peaceful Daventry of days gone by, but a land devastated by a terrible affliction. The kingdom had fallen victim to the ravages of a dreadful three-headed dragon. The beast had burned the land and all around oh, had burned the land all around and killed many people. Alexander was able to use his newfound magical powers to destroy the dragon and rescue an intended victim none other than Princess Rosella, his sister, from its lair. He was taken before King Graham and, Qu and Queen Valenice, and the happy family was reunited. Daventry rejoiced and prospered once more. Or so you would think, because literally the second that that happened, something <laughs> else happened. King's Quest for The Perils of Rosella Shortly after Prince Alexander's return, King Graham's health began to fail. The royal physicians were powerless to help him. Only a magical fruit from the faraway land of Tamir could bring about a cure and restore the health of Daventry's beloved monarch. Graham's daughter, Princess Rosella, set off in pursuit of the healing magic for her father. On her journey, she performed many brave deeds and had many great adventures. 
Princess Rosella's astounding success as an adventurer saved her father's life and ensured the kingdom's continued well-being once more. But that was a lot less that time. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, we're not going to give you any of the details because none of those really matter. King's Quest fought <coughs> out. But Daventry's fortune was not to continue unchallenged. An evil wizard called Mordak, brother of the ill-fated Mananan, was plotting revenge on the royal family. One day, while King Graham was out for a swim, Mordak used his evil magic to kidnap Valenys, Alexander, and Rosella, along with the entire castle of Daventry. Heartbroken and driven, King Graham resumed his adventurer's, or, yeah, resumed his adventurer's cap. Interesting. Once more in a quest to rescue his family from the dread wizard's grasp. After traveling far and being sorely tested, King Graham thwarted Mordak's plans and rescued his entire family. In the process, Graham also released a stolen princess, Cosima, from her bondage in Mordak's castle and sent her back to her home of the land of the Green Isles. But not, that is, before Prince Alexander had become thoroughly and permanently smitten. Uh -uh. That was a nice little summary. And you can get... Um, okay, so like I said, this is 1.0. 1. 1. Let's see. Oh, oh, wait a minute. Credits again? Yeah, uh, again. Hold on. I was gonna this get game's it. almost 30 years old. Uh-huh. Next year. Let's see here. That's what I wanted. Okay. So... King's Quest VI is the story of Prince Alexander's quest to woo Princess Cosima of the Land of the Green Isles. This tale of true love and brave challenge is proudly presented for your enjoyment by Roberta Williams and the King's Quest team, which is blah, 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 blah. We've already seen this like three times. I wish I knew who did... No, no, cat! Oh, my lord. Did you live? Well... I hope everything did, because she jumped on the keyboard and then knocked the keyboard off of the desk. <laughs> I think everything is still going. <sighs> yeah, everything's somehow still going. Well. Which cat was it? <laughs> uh, Edge. It's always, it's never Chewy. Well, look at this. Alexander's royal insignia ring lies abandoned on the sand. It must have slipped off his finger during the shipwreck. Fortunately, it was not lost in the sea. That's kind of good, you know. Might need to know, you know, who we are. Alexander picks up his royal insignia ring from the beach. A long plank lies on the beach. No doubt it once belonged to Alexander's ship. Ooh, that's the plank that I was going to be walked off of, but then the ship crashed, so I got to live. Ooh, lucky for everyone. Uh, yes, Cedric, it is so lucky we have you. I, I'm the best part of all the games. You're the only reason why I play. <laughs> the island is, oh, the island <laughs> is covered with lush green plants. Wait, can we, can we talk to the... Falling down the path is pointless. The current continue, uh, currents continue to murmur, but they do not reply to Alexander. Oh, what about this float, Sam? Oh, without oh, that's a the ship, ship's wheel. Alex. I never, no I never <laughs> noticed that was the wheel. The wheel within the wheel. Uh oh. Alexander pushes the plank to one side. What can you tell me about? <laughs> Voodoo. <laughs> Voodoo. <laughs> a box has been partially buried under the sand. What can you tell me about Cabri Sancour? Alexander opens the box. He finds. I'm just going to tell you everything you did. He finds the head of Cedric inside the box. <gasps> Alexander takes the coin and leaves the ruined box where it is. Alexander closes the box. It really is like just telling everything. Okay, well, it's it's this time. It's about that time. Oh, wait. Did it Alexander not... sees nothing of interest. Did it not? Okay, it's saved. Okay. Voop. Do, 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 do. Uh-oh. The ocean is not as calm as it appears. 
underwater currents tug at Alexander's legs. The water un, uh, the wa underwater toe is amazingly strong here. It pulls ferociously at Alexander's legs. Before Alexander Ooh, can retreat, watch out. the current grabs his legs. The shifting sand vanishes beneath his feet. Against his best efforts, he is dragged out to sea. No, Alexander, don't! <laughs> I blame Cedric! <laughs> the current around the island pulled Alexander under. With my last words, I curse Cedric! <laughs> As Alexander struggles to the surface for the third and last time, he finds himself wishing he paid more attention to the warning signs of an undertow. Boom, I'm just horny. Ticket, please. Next. It's like this is gonna happen in the game sometime. Nothing like getting swept off your feet. <laughs> Well, okay. Doodly doodly doodly. <laughs> well, the first screen of the game has taken 20 hours. <laughs> yes, we took 20 minutes to get through the first screen. Rocks abound on this lush volcanic island. How do we know it's volcanic? Are we, good question. To the left, a small village seems to invite the weary traveler. In the distance, a majestic castle shines in the sun. The path slip, splits here, forming a crossroads. One branch heads northeast towards a distant castle, and one leads northwest to a small village. You'll be on this screen quite frequently. Ooh, there's a perfect branch for me. Wait, Alexander, where are you going? Uh, oh, I guess I have to go to... Here's a little hut just off the path. Perhaps the guard dogs have an occasional use for it, but it looks empty now. Oh. The castle appears to be of Moorish architecture. Its marbled walls and delicate inlaid mosaics are unlike anything Alexander has ever experienced before. His own home, though lovely and dear to his heart, seems rough hewn compared to this delicate beauty. Oh, so it's even better. Two guards take their stands in front of the castle doors. They look quite fierce and have the stiff, blank expressions of soldiers on formal duty. I said duty. <laughs> <laughs> Alexander politely addresses the odd-looking guards at the castle doors, hoping to learn more of his predicament. Good day to you, guards. I was cast upon this island in a storm, and I'm a little confused about my location. Could you tell me what place this is, and who lives in this castle? Uh, uh, what, what is that you say? A castaway? A likely story. We haven't had any foreigners in this part since Alhazred arrived. <laughs> Al uh, Alhazred. Uh, Al has. Uh, it's hard for my dog mouth to say it right. <laughs> Don't be so rude, Gruff. He's not asking for any secrets. You're standing on the Isle of the Crown, lad, and this is the Castle of the Crown. The royal family resides here. Or rather, what is left of the royal family. The Isle of the Crown. But tell me, am I anywhere near the Land of the Green Isles? This is the land of the Green Isles. The Isle of the Crown is the main island, foolish boy. How convenient. Then Princess Cosima must live in this very castle. I can feel my boner telling me to go inside. It's like a dowsing rod. Ah, the princess is indeed our treasured jewel to guard. And we consider it, I remember they go, and we consider it an honor. <laughs> they did. So can we go in? Can I go, can I touch you? The guards of the castle gate look like efficient fighters, and there are doubtless more of them inside. Alexander does decides not to try to force his way in. 
You you haven't asked if you can go in. Excuse me, guard dogs. I've been traveling for months to see Princess Kasima. I would like an audience, please. I'm sorry, but the princess is not receiving visitors, particularly not strangers. I really must see the princess. Can I speak with someone in charge? Who are you that I should bother Captain Saladin? My name is Alexander. I am a prince of Daventry and a friend of the princess. We met for five minutes. Oh, a prince is it? I see. And I'm lord of this dusty path. Step aside. You'll not be getting in the castle without some proof of your claims. I assure you, I am Prince Alexander of Daventry. And I assure you that you're not going to get past me without proof. Okay, so obviously, well, you know, we did pick up. Alexander's ring is made of the purest gold and has the insignia of the royal family of Daventry on its face. We also... Alexander is carrying a copper coin of Daventry. King Graham graces the front of the coin. So take our How ring. convenient. Alexander decides to try his royal insignia ring on the guards. With all of his papers lost in the shipwreck, it is the only possible proof of his identity that he can think of. That's kind of all we got. Perhaps this ring will convince you of my identity. It is the royal insignia ring of Daventry. <laughs> I'm sure. Just let me look at that ring. Well, I'm sorry, Your Highness. It's it's just that princes are so uncommon in these parts. Let me get, let me get Captain Salad. Bagonk. It was a sound effect. <laughs> Woo. Oh, he's a good boy. <laughs> The guard returns a moment later with a majestic-looking creature. Captain Saladin speaks with a voice that is gentle but reflects a will of iron. Prince Alexander of Daventry, I presume? I'm afraid I'm unfamiliar with your country, but I'm sure the Vizier al Hazred will want to meet you. If indeed you are a friend of the princess, please follow me. I miss Tony J doing that. The voice acting was pretty good in this game. Except in this version. Dear God, that floppy was bad. <laughs> Lord Alhazred, a visitor to see you. Prince Alexander of Daventry. What is it that you seek, Prince Alexander? Pardon the intrusion, my lord, but I came to see Princess Cosima. Some months ago, my father, the King Graham, saved my family and I from imprisonment under an evil wizard named Mordak. The same wizard that kidnapped the princess? Exactly. When my father rescued us, he also liberated Cosima and sent her home. Then your father has my gratitude, and that of the entire kingdom. But I am afraid I still fail to see the purpose of your visit. <clears throat> well, I came to make sure that Cosima arrived safely and to pay my respects. Before we parted, she gave me an invitation to visit. I have no doubt she did exactly that at the time, Prince Alexander. However, things have greatly changed for Cosima since her ordeal in Mordak. <laughs> I sense that you have an owl. I would like it to be slain immediately. Ooh, I'm getting the fuck out of here! Whoa! Alexander's like, I can comply with that if it means I can have Cosima. So you're saying if you if I sacrifice the owl, I can put my cha cha and her chi chi? Yes, of course. Kill that owl. What? <laughs> Blend it. Put it in the blender. <laughs> <laughs> Little do they know the immortality of Cedric. Cosima's parents both became ill and died while she was gone. Cosima is sequestered in mourning for them, as befits a princess. She is not receiving visitors of any kind. Even if she were, I do not think your visit would be appropriate. You see, it is time for Cosima to take her responsibility seriously. With her parents gone, she no longer has the luxury to be a carefree maiden. I can see from the bulge in your pants that you have some feelings for Cosima. 
as was her parents' wish, Cosima and I are to be wed. We shall rule the kingdom together. I assure you, our marriage is all Cosima wants now. As a princess and a gentleman, it would be best that you leave before there were any further embarrassment. I, I see. Uh, I suppose that I was mistaken. I thought for certain that Cosima... Well, I apologize. A young man sees what he wishes to see. I'm sorry you've wasted your time traveling to the land of the Green Isles. May your journey home be swift. Um, I don't really have a way home. Perhaps I will take the opportunity to look around your fair land while I'm here. I would advise against that. The kingdom is rather, shall we say, inhospitable these days. But it is your neck. You may risk it if you please. Captain Saladin, will you escort him from the castle? Good day. I've butchered the owl, as you've said, my lord. We're all happy about that. Um, um, sir, sir, why is that guy's eyes glowing? It was an excitement for watching the owl die. You have had your hearing with Vizier Alhazred. I trust you'll respect his wishes and not return. I have been instructed not to let you into the castle again. Good day, my lord. Captain Saladin whispers something to the guard dogs at the castle gate, and they nod with understanding. Good boys. <laughs> Here's a treat. Nom 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 nom, sacrilicious. <gasps> oh, crap! Alexander has a feeling they won't be letting him into the castle again. Eh? I really must get inside the castle to see the princess. Perhaps this will convince you? Be gone. We have no interest in anything you carry. You are not welcome at the castle. Eh? But Give I'm, him a copper coin. I want to go in. We are under orders not to let you anywhere near the castle, Prince Alexander. Be gone! Okay. I'll leave. But I won't like it. At Ooh! Maybe I can help. Cedric has returned to life and now sits perched on the tree. I'm reconstituted. Alexander runs away, hoping to get away from the vile beast. And in the next episode, we'll look around town. We've got the pond. Ooh. Old lamps for new. We have the pawn shoppy and Allie's books. See, Allie's books and pawn shop. Ooh. Curios. Ooh. There's, there could be some good things here, but we're going to have to and wait. so many towers that look like penises. <laughs> Girl in the penis. Wait. Oh, it's no, I think it's the other way around. <laughs> Penis in the girl. <laughs> 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 Bye, everybody. Stay tuned. See for you part later. Two, or don't. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>